Hello and welcome to episode 4 of our building tutorial series. I'm going to jump straight in. Um, so, so far we've been hard coding all of our building mechanics. Um, you know, we've been assigning it directly code or we've been, you know, in the inspector dragging bits of data in here. And when we play it, spawning them in. But we actually, you know, we need a bit of UI to help the player uh, actually be able to interact system we are making so in this video we are going to be uh, working on that working on our ui this is looking like it'll be a two-parter we're going to set up and do quite a bit of the coding of the ui system in this video and then in a follow-up video that one will hopefully be a little bit shorter but we'll kind of just finish it off before we head over to the save and load sort of part of the system so let's just get straight onto this. Uh, I am going to come over here to our hierarchy and we want to get a right click UI and canvas. Now over on the canvas where it says UI scale mode, we can say scale with screen size. And I'm going to put in a reference. So to our canvas, I'm going to add a panel. So right click UI panel and we'll call this build panel. To this, we're going to add a build panel by script. So we'll make that there. We don't need to open that up just yet. So underneath this one, uh, actually, I'm going to make the color be kind of a dark gray, dark black. Just get like that. And then we can go over into 2D mode and then zoom out. Just make this a little bit more menu so we can see that it's dark. And then I'm going to duplicate this and drag it as a child of our build panel. And I'm going to rename this to panel. And we'll drag this over to the side like that. And I'll actually call this head panel top. Make it about there. We might need to as we go. And then to this, we can add over in the inspector, we can add a grid layout group. And we're going to have a constraint. We're going to have a fixed column count and one column these are going to be out and to this i'm going to add three buttons i'm going to do ui button text mesh pro which we'll have to import the emp essentials so on our button for the rect transform i'm going to have it to size dynamically so we're going to have it um we say to stretch and fill the space and go over to our side panel here we can increase the X size of our button to fill our zone, like this uh, side panel that we've made. And our button text size, minimum, we'll put in uh, max, we'll put 50, minimum, 16. And we're going to have uh, three buttons. One that says all part, rename this to all parts button. Duplicate this see that the grid has dropped it beneath it. So for this one, set X to say rooms button. Again, duplicate that. This will be our corridor, but rename this to. Now underneath this, underneath our build panel UI, we're gonna add another panel. This time we'll call this the side panel bottom and just size this to here. Back, bring up alpha and to this uh, bottom panel we're going to add a script this is going to be called build side ui building side ui sorry then we want to add in another panel the our item window for that to fill the other side again we can make it back and to this we'll add a grid layout group as well now underneath this item window we're going to create an empty going to name it building part and I'm going to make another script called building part then to this we can add a, another button child of that so ui have it to, we hold down alt and click this bottom right um stretch button it'll stretch it in all directions this is going to be the button that we use to click and actually select which um building piece we want to set the size of that by coming down to to grid, say, this is the 
8 by 1 to 8, for example. We can make that a bit bigger. And we can change, we're going to change what this looks like through code to show the, um, the sprite of the building piece that we're going to make. And let's go back up to our canvas. And this, we can add one more script and we'll call this the. Let's just go over to our build scripts folder and let's make a new folder in here called UI script. Get all of these scripts that we've just made and drag them over to our UI scripts folder. Then we're going to start off in our UI manager script. So that's going to be the script that we uh, go to first. So the first thing we want in here, I'm just going to get rid of these. I'll have to add them back in, obviously. But let's just start fresh. So we're going to get a uh, public build UI reference for this build. Okay, so with that reference, let's add back in our start method and we can say build panel.gameObject.setActive to false. So when we start the game, we want the UI to be closed. Then in our update function, so here we can say if keyboard.current.tab key was pressed this time, then what we're going to do is let's just toggle this panel on. So build panel dot game object dot set active. We're going to set it to the opposite of its current state. So we can say not build panel dot game object active hierarchy. So if it's open, this will close it. If it's closed, this will open it. <laughs> let's go to the and check that's working. So we've got our build panel script here. And we just drag our in. Now, when we hit play, that should close. It does. And if we tab, it opens. Tab, it shuts. We can still walk around and move with it open. We'll change that. Um, we also have to show the mouse cursor as well. But that's that toggling on and off. Okay, so let's just jump over to the building side panel. Um, we want to go to this panel here. And we're going to add in my image i set that to 256 by say by default go my room just to see what it's going to look like and then underneath that we go ui text pro text break this down break it out let's set this uh, centered like that and let's just call default text in let's say square room looking at i think that's the t version so Square room T, font size a little bit. Um, so now on the script, this building side UI script, we're going to get a reference to that image. So public image unity engine.ui namespace. Let's say building image, and then we can get a public tm the underscore text reference, which is in the tm pro namespace. And we can thing. X. Then we can make a public void method. So public void update side display, which can take in data, which will be data. That's just going to set our building image dot sprite equal to data dot icon and building x dot x equal to data dot display name. So we'll use that a little later. And actually, in a start function, we can set building image dot sprite null building image dot color color dot clear. And when we set our sprite here, we need to set the building image dot color back to here. We can do color dot white. And again, just pop back into Unity and assign those. So image x. And actually, in the start function of our building side, I will set building text text so that equal to an empty string so it looks like it back over to unity hit play see that that's now hidden so let's get let's start stop this getting in the way uh for now just a little bit annoying uh we just go over to our build tool script and start let's get rid of that choose part um section start method and we can now get rid of that building data now if we hit play we won't have a selected part at all yeah that's that. 
getting a null reference exception and we want to clear that reference and actually and get rid of the serialized field from that we don't want to be getting that changed in vector again let's hit play okay so there we go we're not getting any errors but we can't build anything now the idea is we're going to press tab and then select on this ui thing to build getting there we're getting there part way there back out of this so now let's go to our building panel ui and what we want is a public building side ui we'll just call this side UI, which when we choose a building part we can update that image and text to the part that we've just chosen so public building side ui we also want a public static unity action which is in the unity engine dot events namespace and this is going to pass through some building data and we can call this on part chosen then to this we want to add a public void on click we'll take in um building data so call this chosen data and say on part chosen if there's anything subscribed to it let's uh, invoke pass through the chosen data and then ui and update the side display pass through the chosen data as well so we're gonna when we click on a button we're gonna call this on click event Pass through that button's building data that, it, that we're going to assign to it. And then we are going to invoke this event and then anything that's listening out for it will get access to this data. So our build tool is going to be listening out for when this uh, Unity action is called and it'll know which piece to spawn in for the player to place. Okay, so now we need to go over to our building part UI. So here, this is the button that's going to be over on the right hand side of the screen. So what we need is a private button um, reference called button. And to use this, we'll have to use the unity engine.ui namespace. We want a private building data variable. We'll call this assigned data. We also want a private build panel UI method called parent display so in our awake function we're going to say button equal to get component in children and this could be of type button and to that button we're going to listen for it to be clicked so we can say on click dot add listener then we're going to add a on button click method which we Make. so private void on click when we click that button we're going to call this method this uh, on button method on button click method that we've just made okay so now we also need a public void init function which is going to take in some building data we can call assigned data we can set assigned data so our global variable we can set that equal to on that we are passing in then with our button, we can get component. We're going to look for the image component of our button and set the sprite equal to the signed data dot. This also wants to take in a um, building panel UI reference for this parent display. And we can set parent display equal like that. So we're going to spawn these buttons in dynamically from. Um, of the script and then we're going to pass through the data that this uh, building part ui button needs to know about and also the parents display so we can call a method on our building panel ui script and then in this on button click um, method which we've created we're going to call up to our parent display we're going to access the on click event there and we're going to pass through our data we're going to invoke this event Going to update our side display so we're going to click on this button here um we've got a byte build panel let's drag in our building side ui reference and then we've got our building part here this button we've got a building part ui what we want to do is uh, 
drag this as a reference over into our UI scripts folder and we can make a prefab of that. And then we get that from hierarchy. Okay, so we'll leave that there. Otherwise this video will go on for a bit too long. The next bit, because the next bit is quite a um, evolved bit of coding. But just so we know what's gonna happen is that through code, we're gonna find these, um, we're gonna get these buttons and depending on which parts we have selected, we're gonna spawn in X amount of buttons. We're gonna be able to click on these buttons, then choose the part that we're gonna place world. As I said, that'll be covered in the next video. This is a bit of a shorter one to make way for what we're gonna cover in the next video. That next video is available already now on Patreon, um, along with all of the project files as well. So feel free to head over to patreon.com forward slash danpos. It's also linked in the description below as well. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. I'd just like to take a minute to thank my amazing patrons without whom I would not be able to do these kind of long form sort of series. In the 10,000 XP tier, we have John Smart and Trey Briggs and all of the wonderful 4,000 XP tier members are on screen now. Thanks again for your support.